What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released macOS Sequoia 15.3 to all compatible Macs that are running macOS Sequoia. Now this update came in at just over two and a half gigabytes on my Mac Studio M1 Ultra. So that size will vary, but it should be under three gigabytes for most machines. Now, as far as the build number, if we go up to about this Mac, you can see that we are currently running macOS Sequoia 15.3. And if we click right there, we can see that the new build number is is 24D60. All right, so now what's new here in macOS Sequoia 15.3? And the first thing has to do with Apple intelligence. So macOS Sequoia 15.3 is going to automatically enable Apple intelligence after you update. So even if you had Apple intelligence disabled before, it will be automatically enabled during the onboarding process when you update to macOS Sequoia 15.3. Now it will be on by default but you can easily just go ahead right here and click this off switch and turn off Apple intelligence if you do not want to use it. But keep in mind that even if you do turn Apple intelligence off, the storage that it takes up in your Mac will remain. It will not remove that storage space, that you know data. So if you go into your general storage right here and then go down to the bottom, to Mac OS. If you click on the I next to Mac OS, it will show you how much space Apple intelligence takes up. So mine is 5.45 gigabytes. And that's actually a little bit less than what it was on version 15.2. So the previous build of Mac OS Sequoia was just slightly higher at 5.5 gigabytes. So it looks like Apple is, you know, optimizing that storage a little bit there with Apple intelligence, which is a good sign, especially for the future. And speaking of Apple intelligence, this update finally brings Jinmoji to Mac OS Sequoia. So to do this, you just need to go into messages or any app that supports Jinmoji. So we'll go into messages here. You just have to click on the emoji icon. And from here, you'll see you can describe an emoji. So if I start typing in cat with a hat, it will start, you know, showing you no results and create new emoji. You can click right there, or you can just simply click this button right here to the right. And once you do that, it will pull up this new splash screen. And of course, this is still a beta feature, just like it is on iOS and iPad OS. So it says here, express yourself. We have personalized Genmoji and use Genmoji like emoji. So all of the features that we get in iOS are now available on Mac OS, which is great to see. So if we go ahead and click on continue, now we have support for that in messages. So now that we have that enabled, I can type in cat with a blue hat and either click this button Button or create new emojis. So we'll click this button right here and you can see that it's going to start creating that Gen Moji for us. So here's what the interface looks like when you have some Gen Moji creations. You can kind of just click and drag over to swipe through these or you can click on the arrows to go to the previous and next generation right here, the next generated image. And then you can click on add up in the top right and that will add it into your text box right here. And you can definitely tell that this is still in beta because it did not add it my first try. So you do need to go back to your emojis and you will see it right there. So if for some reason it did not add it to the text field by default, at least not the first time. So let's try that again. So red whale with blue hair, if we click on that and click on add, let's see if it adds it in there. Okay, so that time it did go ahead and add it into the field right here, which is great. And for some reason on Mac OS, you do not get the option for Genmoji when you click on the plus to the left of the text field here. So there's no way to get to Genmoji quickly like you can on the latest iOS 18.3 update. There's a Genmoji section here but for some reason not on Mac OS. And then we also have a change to summarize notifications. So if you go into your notification center over here on your Mac, you'll notice that when you have a notification summary like I do from the home app here, it is now in italics. So it stands out a little bit more from the other notifications that you might have in your notification center. So this is the same as the feature that we get in iOS and iPadOS 18.3. It carries over here to to Mac OS. And if you right click on the notification, we have notification settings right here, and it will take you into the settings application. And then of course, from here, you have the option to turn off summarized notifications if you would like to. So you get the option for some applications. However, for news and entertainment applications, you do not even get the choice of turning those on because Apple has temporarily disabled notification summaries as a whole for news 
and entertainment applications. So you can see what that will look like right here from music, for example, it says temporarily unavailable. So even if I had this turned on, it's not going to summarize any of my notifications. And the reason for this is of course, because the BBC called out Apple several times for you know, ba basically giving false headlines for notifications as a summary on people's iPhones. So Apple, you know, took the criticism and they basically took down the notification summaries for news and entertainment apps for the time being. They did not say when it's going to come back, if it's going to be in a new update or if it's going to be an over the air, you know, server side updates. We don't know, but for now, if you do see temporarily unavailable here under summarized notifications, just know that's why. Now, what I found interesting is that it does not disable the summaries from Safari based news sources. So for example, Apple newsroom, bring a trailer. Both of those could be considered news, especially Apple newsroom right here but it does not say temporarily disabled because it's going through safari so that could be a little workaround if you want to get your notifications summarized and it may be disabled from like the news app for example you can maybe go onto the site and add it through safari now also at the top of the summarize notifications section in your settings we have a new subline that says summaries may contain errors so it does you know basically say that you should not trust 100% every single summary that you get in your notifications. Because once again, I said this in my 18.3 video, but it's really AI that's the problem here. AI as a whole, it's not really an Apple specific issue that some of these summaries are not gonna be super accurate. It's just AI as a whole. It's gonna hallucinate, it's gonna have error sometimes. So Apple is making that clear by saying that summaries may contain errors. And if you go back to the main notifications page right here and you go into a news or entertainment application like music, for example, you will see that it also says temporarily unavailable right here because you do get these summarized notifications option in that specific applications settings we also have a change in the calculator application it's not really a change it's kind of a feature that has returned in mac os sequoia 15 this was on mac os 14 but it was you know for some reason missing in mac os sequoia but anyways if we go into here we'll type in five times nine equals 45 and before if you clicked on equals nothing would happen you could click it 100 times nothing would happen but now if you click equals it will continue that operation so it's going to repeat the operation every time you click on equals just like we could do on previous versions now if we go into our safari and go to about safari you will notice that we now have a new version so version 18.3 is the latest for safari you will get this update after you update your mac to 15.3 so we can look at the release notes here a lot of these release notes a lot of these you know resolved issues and features are going to be really catered to developers so i will leave this down in the description below if you do want to read through it but you can kind of see a brief look at those right here and then we do also have the release notes for mac os sequoia as a whole and this tells us of course that apple intelligence will be turned on by default once you you know complete the onboarding or during the onboarding for the update and then we also have a resolved issue for Swift UI about the on key press modifier. But perhaps the most important change in Mac OS Sequoia 15.3 comes with the security patches. So security updates are always, you know, a very important part of Mac OS updates, really any software update as a whole. And we have several updates here, several fixes here in Mac OS Sequoia 15.3, including some related to AirPlay, quite a few actually related to AirPlay, as you can see there, and quite a few down here as well, audio, core media, FaceTime. And if we search for active, you will see that there actually was one that was being actively exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 17.2. So this bug is also vulnerable for macOS Sequoia. It's just that the you know report that was actively being exploited was against iOS, but it also works on macOS Sequoia, as you know said right here. So uh, more FaceTime issues, iCloud, you know bugs. Uh, kernel bugs, of course. So quite a few security patches here that you will definitely want to go ahead and update for. These are always going to be important, especially for your Mac, I feel like more than anything, because that's where you will most likely have the most sensitive data. And then as far as the performance goes, I've had a few people ask me to cover the performance with these Mac OS update videos. So let me know in a comment down below if you want me to maybe dig a little bit deeper into the performance, especially when it comes to memory and things like that. So I didn't really do a lot of looking in here on Mac OS Sequoia 15 
15.2, but as far as 15.3 goes, it feels about the same to me. And as far as my memory, I'm not noticing anything jumping out here in terms of, you know, memory spikes or anything like that. So the memory pressure is fine. You know, I'm not using any swap. So, you know, if you want me to look more into this, like I said, in future macOS videos, let me know. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, a difference from one version to another, especially on these point updates. You usually notice a big difference when it goes from like macOS 14 to macOS 15, or if there's just like a big bug with memory, for example, like memory swap or something like that, and then it gets fixed in the next update. So yeah, that's that's an update here on performance with macOS Sequoia 15.3. As far as battery life goes, if you have a MacBook, I would not really expect any type of change. These updates, once again, typically do not uh, change much when it comes to battery life, unless there was a, a big issue beforehand. So let's go ahead and talk about what's coming next for macOS. So next up is going to be macOS Sequoia 15.3. So this should be a pretty large update. And I say that it should be a big update because we know for a fact that iOS 18.4 is going to be a big update because we have the new Siri coming. So the upgraded Siri with personal context where it can take action in and across different applications and it's going to have on-screen awareness. So all three of those are coming in iOS 18.4. So those are going to be absolutely massive for Siri, but we don't know for sure if those are coming on macOS yet. And if they are coming on macOS, you know, how like are all three of them coming and how's it actually going to be useful on macOS? So hopefully we see all of those Siri changes come to macOS, but it's too early to tell just yet. So as far as when to expect that, we're hearing that that's going to come out in April. So we are quite a ways away from seeing macOS Sequoia 15.4, but we are expecting to see that sometime in April. If I had to guess, it would be in the first half of April. And we should see the first betas start going out for that within the next couple of weeks. So that is macOS Sequoia 15.3, a relatively minor update, which is the usual for Apple. Usually the 0.2 and 0.4 updates are the large updates every year. And then 0.3 updates are usually kind of the stopgap, the small update in the middle. So hopefully we see those big changes with macOS 15.4. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see that next video, be sure to give this one a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that next macOS Sequoia video. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.